Good morning, Dawn. Hey, Liz. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Yeah, thank you very much. We took the week off last week with regarding the great resignation and got some well uh, deserved rest. And I hope that everybody else who's watching had the opportunity to take some time as well. Although, depending on your business, it might be the time when you are the most hectic, right? That's right. Yeah. Good. Well, today, uh, Liz, you and I had talked about um, how do we think, how do we want to start thinking about the new year? And a lot of people, you know, are coming up to the end, came up through that, through 2021, thinking about what am I going to create? What do I want to generate? How do I complete on the last year? And if you're in great resignation mode, because the reason we're doing this is that because people are thinking about the great resignation, uh, we stop, we would start to talk about some different kinds of, we're always about planning, thinking about, thinking about what do you want? What do you need? Taking the actions to have your dream come true, right? So uh, Liz, you want to just tell everybody a little bit about what we're doing with the Great Resignation? Absolutely. So with regards to the Great Resignation, we noticed that, you know, with everything that's been going on um, since the pandemic, a lot of people are um, considering leaving and making significant changes in their life, whether they're leaving the corporate world, they're pivoting their business, they're looking at some big changes and some big shifts. So part of what we do at Shemul is we help people kind of define the roadmap that they're looking to create in their life and get the steps to go there, right? And figure out how much is enough. So we are doing these calls to kind of add helpful tips, make sure you realize you're not alone um, and things that you can ask yourself before you take a big leap to make sure that you feel prepared. That's what we're doing here at Shimula. Right, thanks Liz. Cause you know, I think what's really critical with all of this is that we often all reach a place where we're kind of done. We feel like we've hit the, we've hit, we've gone as far as we can go or um, we're not getting the satisfaction that we want. We're not getting the acknowledgement that we need. And, you know, you and I really are focused on supporting uh, women and others, but women on having a fulfilled life. Yes. And what often happens is uh, money, it becomes an issue. We don't take new actions because we're worried about the money. We're worried about losing our benefits. We're worried about, you know, do we get out of the workforce and come back in? Uh, is it too late in life? You know, is it, can I do it? Right. So we, uh, we yes. really want to, we want to meet you where you are and support you in whatever it is that you want. And the one thing we've learned over the years, and Liz, you talk about this quite a lot, is, you know, anywhere you go, there you are. Um, and if you leave a job because you hate something, chances are you're going to find that same thing that you hate, no matter where you go until you get it resolved. Right. And so, yeah. So did you want to say something about that? Oh my gosh, that's so true. I know I've changed jobs or have changed teams in my career. And then I go, wait a minute, how can the same thing exist? And I realize mm -hmm. I'm the common denominator. Right. But it... It takes some time to figure that out. So it's so important you, that you're really clear on what you want and why you want it yeah. so that uh, you can look for the thing that you want you so, yeah. it, so that you're running to something, not away from something, which is what a lot of people do. And a lot of people, you know, the pandemic has brought out a lot of opportunity for clarity. Some people are looking to run away from something. As you said, that's not always as helpful as moving towards something. Sometimes they have the reason wrong, right? Mm -hmm. um, maybe they just want more work-life balance. Maybe they want um, to make more money because they have the big dream over here, this lifestyle thing. Or maybe it's they wanted to launch this dream that they've always wanted to do. They feel like they're running out of time and money and they don't know where to get started. And they feel like they need to put that dream on the back burner because everybody else needs the resources that they thought they would use for it. Yeah. Well, so, so today, you know, thinking about resources, um, what, we, what we're going to be doing over the next two weeks is looking at um, Bob Proctor's 11 forgotten laws. And uh, they're forgotten or they're lost. You know, it doesn't matter how you want to think about them. But things like the law of gravity, the law of gravity exists, whether you think about it or not. And so the laws we're going to be talking about, they exist, whether you think about them or not. And so whether you're an employer or you're an employee or you're an entrepreneur, all of these laws are really important to consider. They're the, they're the laws that, that are behind what drives you. 
right? Okay. It, what Behind what some people might call motivation or something like that. These are really important laws. And today I wanted to talk about this, the first law that Bob Proctor talks about, which is the law of thinking. So Liz, when I say the law of thinking, what comes to mind for you? <laughs> Oh, well, I know what comes to mind for me is I was trained um, to value thinking and brains and smarts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, sorry, it's one of those things that is so interesting that I was always, my dad was an engineer, right? And always, always think about like, you know, what do you know? and What kind of knowledge do you bring to the table? Not always, which you and I know, curiosity helps a lot. So that's actually what comes to mind. Sorry, I got completely sidetracked there. Yeah. No, it's okay because that I think a lot of people, it is about knowledge. They think they think about they think knowledge or they think that whatever is going on in their head is right. thinking. Right. And what if it's not thinking? What if all that stuff isn't thinking? So I'm gonna show a, a little PowerPoint here, kind of walk us through this whole notion of. The, I, that what we are thinking about is not thinking. And if you want a new future, you have to think new thoughts, mm -hmm. right? So here, I'm gonna see if I can do this without totally like losing things in the process. So hang on. <laughs> we had funny faces there when you were switching over. Oh yeah? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so here we go. So can you see this okay, Liz? Yeah, I can see it. Great. So um, what Bob Proctor says, and a lot of people say this, you know, Joe Dispenza, a lot of the big gurus say, you know, most people just don't think. We don't engage in deep thinking. Mm -hmm. We have, instead we have like 50,000 thoughts a day and 95% of them are those same ones you had yesterday and the day before. Mm -hmm. And it's these, these same thoughts over and over again. We talk about the weather. We talk about the TV show, we talk about the prices at the grocery store, we talk about our kids, we talk about what we love about our jobs or what we hate about our jobs, but it's not deep thinking. It's just thoughts, right? It's this river, it's like a river of thoughts and certain th things drop down in front, of your, in front of your eyes. Oh, I'm gonna think about that thing today. Or you look out the window and you see the birds. Like I can look out the window and I see my bird feeder and I think, oh, I wonder where the birds are. Do I have bird? feeder do I have feed in the in the seed in the bird feeder and then my brain goes there but that's not thinking that's just a regurgitation whole right. I've had these thoughts before right I wonder why my daughter hasn't responded to my text I wonder about this I, but there's not real thinking there and and what happens is the progress we make in our life is made by these ruling dominant thought processes. Mm -hmm. So if you aren't getting anywhere, or if you're unhappy, or if you're frustrated or miserable, consider that it's because you keep thinking the same stuff over and over again. Right. Right. So what happens, you know, you know, when we think the same thing over and over again, we get the what same results. <laughs> yeah. And then we wonder, hmm, I wonder what's going on here. And I, and I think most of us aren't even present to all the things that we're thinking and all the things that are coming out of our mouth. Right? Right. And so when we're when we're completely unaware, um we we don't we aren't able to take any kind of new action. So when we jump from job to job or place to place, the reason why we have more of the same is because we keep thinking the same thoughts, whether they're positive or negative, we keep thinking those same thoughts. And so I wanted to talk today a little bit about how, how do we get how do we get new thoughts into our thinking, right? You can have a, I mean, a lot of people meditate, right? So what happens when you meditate, Liz? Can you share a little bit about what happens when you meditate and you visualize? Yeah, um, what you're doing is you're actually stopping the automatic patterns of the, the thoughts that are repeating. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, Joe Dispenza basically says there's, there's a couple different ways it happens, but basically your muscles hold memories of emotions and then said signals to your brain saying, oh, 
we're sad or we're angry or we are verklempt or whatever it is, right? So now you need to have a thought that matches that emotion. So a lot of these stories are automatic and they're just repetitive thinking and observations of things that have happened before because it's mass- matching um, your memories and the memories are the stored emotions, right? Right. So th- the thing about meditation is it allows you to pause all of that. Mm-hmm. You can be able to stop the automatic and you can get curious um, you can get clarity with regards to a question. It's just um, you're allowed to get into your body and it's no longer this um, outside repetitive record that keeps playing, you know? Right, right. And the the, the one thing, so I think that um, today we might give them a couple of tools if we have time, maybe tomorrow we'll spend some time on tools addressing how do you change your thinking? Because I wanted to share this one idea Um, we have these things that we call paradigms and a a paradigm is an automatic habitual way of thinking and reacting and responding to the world. And people wonder like, where do I get, where does my paradigm come from? Right. How do I, why do I think these things? And why does Liz think her things? And we both, you know, if I talk to my sisters about Christmas from 20 years ago, we'll all have very different thoughts about what happened that day or in those at those events right Mm -hmm. and those are all part of our paradigms and we're attached to our paradigms but what happens is you see where it says subconscious here liz and whoever happens to be watching now or on the replay so when you are born you actually don't have a conscious there's no there's no critical thinking when you're born right You're just like a big sponge and thoughts just come at you, you know, ideas come at you and you absorb everything. So if you are raised in a house that has lots of money and people are happy and you get fed and cuddled whenever you want, you're going to have good thoughts about money and happiness and families and food and things of that nature. Needs being met. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that'll happen like up until you're about four or five years old. So what if you came from a family that had no money? or if you came from a family that had a lot of money, but there was a lot of arguing, right? Or if you came from no money, but everybody was happy, right? You have built these thoughts, these systems, they built, it's built into your body. It's into, it's truly about, you're built into your body and your brain. Um, Because we're all like, just, we're all living vibrational things. You know I mean? Plants have vibrations, the rocks have vibrations, the molecules, are, are all put together and differently, but everything is vibrating, including our bodies. So we have the subconscious set of thoughts and beliefs that have just been given to us. Mm-hmm. They're given by the church, you know, the preachers. They're given by your babysitters. They're given by, you know, how hot daycare or, providers, right? Yeah, how hot or cold it is, right? Um, and then around age four or five, you start to add thinking. So for four or five years, she's just taking in stuff and oops. So you're just taking in stuff. And then um, as you start to think, you start deciding if you like something or not like something, but what are you comparing it to? Your past. Yeah. That subconscious mind, that stuff that's been filled. So if, if you came from a family that was, rich but unhappy then you start to align you know you're like I like that because it I know it's I'm rich but I don't like that because I'm unhappy right you start you're comparing it to what you learned when you were young right it's not conscious thinking though it's not it, it's not that I I can be happy or and I can be wealthy and I can be satisfied those kinds of things we are always comparing to the whatever's in our subconscious and we have to find ways to move thoughts from the conscious into the subconscious because the subconscious kind of causes a barrier nope this is who we are we are we have money and we are unhappy or we have (laughs) no money and we are unhappy or we you know whatever it is 
but that, that's kind of like, you know, this bottom part of our brain is saying, it's repeating the same stories. You know, it's repeating the stories of your dad and engineering and knowledge is important. It's repeating the stories of, you know, my, your parents who say you can have or do or be anything you want. And then when you can't, you, you, you're like, it's like, what do you mean I can't? I was told I could, right? So you're always arguing with your subconscious when things don't line up. So what are you hearing so far in this, Liz? Like, imagine that you're one of our participants, someone who's hanging out. What, what kind of, th what's there in the moment? Or oh my God, want... how do I stop the conversation? Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Right. It seems like there's a poor family upstairs arguing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's huge. It's all up there. But so the way that you do it is you bring all of your senses into play, right? So thought, taste, smell, hearing, touch, those are all important, you know, because remember, we talked about how your thoughts are in your body. Mm -hmm. So you have to, so, you know, it's, when you smell an apple pie, some people yeah. want to vomit and some people remember certain things that are happy. If people say, do you want a glass of milk? I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to throw up because I don't like milk. And others are like, oh yeah, that reminds me of when I was a kid. So you want to engage, start to engage, engage the senses and be clear about what you want to think about. That's yeah. the hard part. You have to be conscious and say, here's what I want. Yep. Here's what I want. Yeah. And you know, most people say what they don't want instead of saying what they do want. And some people don't even know what they want. Well, that's because of their paradigm. That's because yeah. the subconscious, at some point, somebody led them to believe or they created a conversation that said, I don't have a say in what I want. I have to right. do what others want. Right. It could be you grew up in a society, in a, in a community where you were to be obedient. Well, if you're to be obedient, there's not a lot of room for wanting. Right. You just have to follow the rules. You don't get to create the rules. You might you could become a rebel. That would be conscious thinking. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know what I want. That's just. That's that's just old thinking. Right. So we have to bring, we have to be, it's important to start to become conscious of what you are thinking about. So one of the ways you notice it, like Liz, you were talking about, is you start to notice, what are you thinking about? Is the first, you, 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 if you're not sure, you start with, what am I thinking about? So when you sit down and meditate, you'll be get really clear, really fast, all the stuff that's on your mind. Yep, because it keeps coming up no matter how hard you try the meditation. Yeah. Right, right. How else can you, how else can people become clear on what they're already thinking about? You know, one of the things I do, because I, you know, people are in my observation, either really good at pinpointing how they're feeling or hearing what they're saying. It's kind of hard to do both, right? So right. some people will be like, oh my God, this is the thought that just keeps coming up in my mind. I have to do this by myself or why there's nobody else around. That could be one way that things show up or there's never enough. It's always just barely enough, right? And mm -hmm. I slide into to be home base with just barely enough time, just barely enough money, whatever it is, right? Um, whatever the thought is, you might be able to hear the actual words. Some people might hear the, feel the feeling, right? right? And no matter what happens, just kind of get curious there because this is the automatic patterning that shows up in your life. And mm -hmm. it's been there for a really long time. And, you know, the longer we've gone without listening or hearing or feeling, sometimes the longer we have to pause to hear or feel, right? Yeah, it's not going to change overnight, right? You have to consciously change the thought processes. So if you notice that, um, let's say you decide you want a job where you make more money and you start to look for jobs and you notice that when you are looking for jobs, your heart starts to pound a little harder, right? Or you get a little sweaty hands or you get like, okay, I don't know if I can, I'm not, I'm not good enough. You can start to feel the feelings when you start to read the job descriptions. You can 
notice what you're thinking, right? I'm not sure if I'm good enough. I don't have enough of those skills. Oh, I'm not qualified for that. How, or I'm, there's nothing out there that's designed just for me. You want to start to notice how you feel and the words that are coming up, right? Right. So that's and why sometimes it's a, you just feel a physical sensation. Yeah. And some people might clench their, their oh, jaw. Okay? Yeah. Some people might like raise a hip or they get a gut feeling. And that's okay. You know what? You don't always know the feeling or the thought. Just pretend like you're can scan your body, notice where it is, sit next to it, and just get curious. Mm -hmm. And the longer that you pause, the more information comes. Right. Now you keep using the word pause, the longer that you pause. What do you mean by that? So, you know what? Um, I was always raised with this, like, oh, you know, there's something you want, you, you assert yourself and you go and get it and you go and do and do and do, right? And sometimes that only gets you so far and then you get a lot of contrast and you're like, in my observation as well, contrast shows up when things aren't necessarily working or you're running against a pattern that is ready to move and shift. So, but if we don't know what the pattern is, but you feel like you're just hitting a wall again, it's okay to pause and journal and say, okay, I feel frustrated. What am I frustrated about? And just kind of keep drilling down a little bit so you can understand the the thought and the memory of the record that's playing over and over and over again. So as we talk for the next couple of days about like what can you do about that, mm -hmm. right? And you involve all your senses, you have to create a new thought, right? And recognize when, a, when, when the pattern's showing up so you can then transition to the new thought and create new memories. Right. That actually are the opposite thought the opposite mem of the memory right, right. Mm -hmm. so you know you can't just assert and plow yourself through because a lot of times the law of assertion just means you get more of what you don't want right right so uh what we want to leave people with today is you want to become aware of the current thoughts that you have because the thoughts that you have have an impact on your mood and your ability to move forward because it's the thinking if there's a thinking emotional cycle that keeps you in action so you want to start to become aware of the thoughts that you're having because what we're trying to get at is deep thinking deep thinking that lets you dream deep thinking that lets you Imagine what you want, deep thinking though, it, that will allow you to think about new actions that you've never taken before because the 50,000 thoughts you had yesterday and today and the day before and the day before and the day before are not getting where you want. So you can meditate and you can start yes. to see all your thoughts and emotions that show up there and the physical things that show up there. You, uh, you could have a, I uh, have taken on not complaining Boy, that is hard. <laughs> Even saying that's a complaint, right? So to notice <laughs> where I complain and what I complain about, and you know whether it's about the weather or the car or the birds or the what the temperature is or somebody said this or somebody did that, your complaints will point you into the direction of the kinds of things you're thinking about. It just means mm -hmm. that that those things that are happening out there aren't aligned with what you want. So start to notice what you complain about. You can journal. What's on your mind? What's bothering you? What's working? What's not working? Just start to get some thoughts on a page. Notice the emotion. Notice how it feels in your body. You can't make a change until you become aware. And so we would like you to take some time to, to begin to become aware of what's already going on, at, at which is, will help you see how to add deeper thinking. Anything you, else you want to say, Liz, about You know, this? adding a new physical routine, like, you know, um, jogging, walking, dancing, you know, especially if you're aware of the thought or the pattern and kind of doing like um, the opposite in the thought, but doing something physical or smelling something different or, you know, smelling mm -hmm. a pleasant thought, having a new thought and doing something physical at the same time. Right. Right. Brushing your teeth so, with the opposite hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we wanted to remind people just a couple things. Tomorrow night at seven, 
we are doing a mind mapping and strategy workshop. So mind mapping is a new way to get at some deep thinking. It's, it's a way, it's a tool you can use to see what you want and a new way to strategize for the new year. So we invite you tomorrow night, uh, we'll put the Zoom link uh, where you can register. Um, we have another, uh, uh, and then we'll put more out there about some upcoming programs that we have, but we want you to be aware that we're here for you to support you in what's going on in 2022. So um, we'll be back again tomorrow at 11. Have a great day. Yeah, see you guys later. Bye. Bye.